Hey everybody, it's Amy Graham, the Badass Valkyrie, and this is the second video in the Finding 52 series, and this is going to be the second focus uh, week, and the first week was um, about sleep, and that was included in my introduction to Finding 52. And so this week, I wanted to go ahead and get the second video up. It is Sunday, so at the next, the second week, which is third week of January. <laughs> For some reason, I wanted to say February, but uh, the second focus is going to be on movement, and I used movement instead of running, exercise, training, whatever, um, because I know that some of you may not be ready to do that, and so just moving is where the focus uh, would be for this week. And when I say focus, I just mean something that you are kind of paying attention to. Because with self-care, it is very easy to get lost in all of the, oh, I want to buy that, or oh, I want to do this, or oh, I'm going to go there. And, you know, and part of this process is to focus on yourself for an hour every day, or not every day, every day if you can, that'd be great, but an hour every week. And part of that focus is to pay attention to yourself the entire week, not just in that particular hour or two hours or five hours or 24 hours. <laughs> so I am I want you to kind of pay attention to your movement. And I personally, for me, running and walking and all of that has made me feel so much better that it just getting out and moving and changing your view of your world can be life changing. And you don't, it doesn't cost anything. I, I, and I'm not telling you to go out and invest in running shoes or, you know, get a gym membership or whatever. I would love for you to do that because I think it would be uh, beneficial. But uh, I also know that at the beginning of January, there is a lot of push for you to get out and, you know, buy a gym membership. Although I will say this right now, if, if it's something you're thinking about, in January, they usually have their best deals. Just saying. But, uh, like my gym is $9.99 a month. And today, as a matter of fact, I had to go to my gym and do my run. And I realized that I missed going to my gym. I, for the past, goodness, six to eight months, I've actually been running outside, which I never thought I would. I thought I would always be running in the gym. But I had a mind change and realized that uh, on the treadmill, it's much softer on your body and it is made to take the impact so you don't actually get an accurate run if you wanna be a runner and compete in races that are on the road, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so I opted to change the way that I ran and ran and run outside so that if I choose to do a race like a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, which is coming up on April 28th or April 18th, um, my body will be used to running outside. Now, I have asthma induced allergies and other allergies. I'm allergic to all the grasses out there, and springtime is horrifying for me. But I also know that the more, I, more time I spend outside, the more time I get in the sun, which I love, and that feeds my soul, but I also get used, more used to the allergens. So um, my run today was a 5K, and I had a great time. I was, I was like 13.40 as my average time, which is great. And what I realized was that one, I was not struggling because of my asthma. And so my lungs were not on fire because I was in a warm temperature room running on a treadmill. So uh, we had a big snow last night and um, instead of 
risking running on snow that was on ice and going out and breaking a hip, I decided to opt for the gym. And I realized that I had not been in there in several months. And so it was, the decor had all changed and everything, which was nice. I really actually enjoy going to the gym. But I also really realized that I missed the social interaction. Even though I did not speak to a person there, but watching people, which is something that I love to do, uh, I, I, I saw people from every stage that I've gone through and every stage that I would love to go through. And, you know, I was like, I remember when I was that way. I was remembering when I was that way. I remember trying to do that machine. Um, one of the interesting things was the machine that I, that I chose to run on was right. My view was the pull-up bars. I have tried to do a pull-up for over six years now. I have not been able to do an unassisted pull-up. Not even one. Not even one. And it is something that I try to do every year. I don't focus on it. But it is something that I would like to do. So maybe this year will be the year instead of the other six years that I have not done that. <laughs> but I just, I noticed that I was like, oh, look at that. Look at all those people doing. And there was one guy that was like, he, was, he would do a pull up and then he'd drop, then he'd drop one arm and do one arm pull up, then put the arms back up, then do a full pull up, then drop the other arm and do a one arm pull up. And I'm like, Hmm. you're just showing off now, <laughs> but that's okay. I, I, I was just like, oh, I want to do one. Why can't I just do one? And so there are still goals that I, I need to get to and things that I cannot do. One of the things that I know that holds a lot of people back are that they don't, they feel like they get judged in the gym or that people are making fun of them, or that they are so uncomfortable with themselves that they can't go into the gym. I will tell you right now, that was me when I started. I walked into that gym back in the day and I was 450 pounds. Literally scared to get on a machine because I thought I was gonna break it. The whole, I can't remember what movie it is, but it's got Jack Black in it, and he sees um, Gwyneth Paltrow as this beautiful, thin girl, and in reality, in, in Gwyneth Paltrow's reality, she's, you know, 400 pounds, and she breaks a chair, and he freaks out because he's like, you weigh like a buck 20, how did you break a chair? Oh my God. I've been there. I've been the person sitting on a chair that I broke. And it used to be a joke for me when I would go to um, different SCA events, which were medieval reenactment events. And these, these benches or chairs or those lawn chairs that are made out of canvas and plastic. When they started, those were not the most reliable chairs on the planet. I can tell you that. So we have this, this award that's called the tank. It's ter uh, totally aggressive, nasty killer. I always wanted to be a tank because to be a tank, you had to be over 250 pounds. And I mean, that was one of the primary things to be, as a fighter, to be this tank, this big, just nonstop tank. And so I always joked, is this tank test, is the chair tank tested? Because I knew if it was tank tested, that it had held heavy people and I could sit down in it. But going into a restaurant and person would be like, would you like a booth or a table? I'm like, table please. Because I knew nine times out of 10, I could not fit in a booth seat, especially if the tables didn't move. Things that you make allowances for. But I went in and I started doing what I could. And that's the goal of movement is to do what you can. If you can't run, don't run. Work up to it. If you have not walked around your block, start. If, if you have not walked to your mailbox, do it. 
Just try it one time this week. One time. Once. That's all that anybody can ask for is for you to try something that's beyond your scope of movement once. See how you feel. You know, I wholeheartedly understand not being out, able to get out and run. And if you have not ran, or if you have not even started walking, I don't want you to run. I beg you not to, because it will defeat you. And I don't want that. Self-care is not about being defeated. Self-care is about getting a win. And the only win you have to worry about, if you choose to do it, and by the way, don't feel like you have to do the focuses. That's just, this is just a little extra bonus kind of, hey, let's focus on this. Let's everybody focus on this if you want to do something extra. And it's just movement. And it can be as simple as walking to your mailbox, walking around your house, walking around your block, walking from the far end of the parking lot into the store and back, going to the store at all. Just added movement. Um, one of the things that I had not planned on doing, but kind of hit me the first time I walked back into my office, the uh, right after the first of the year, it was uh, January 2nd, and uh, I pushed the elevator, and a friend of mine that doesn't work in my office was like, here I thought you would, of all people, would take the stairs. And I was like, you know what? He's right. I should take the stairs. Not saying that I don't ever take the elevator, because I do. Uh, when I was training hard, and the reason he, he wasn't trying to be mean, but he doesn't see me very often because we work kind of weird schedules. But the last time he saw me, I was training very, very hard for competing in Rome, which I didn't get to do. Uh, and so it was just a shock for him to see me taking the elevator. And it was a shock for me to sit there and go, you know what? You're right. I should take the, I should take the stairs. So I, it helps my IT band, which is I'm having issues with already anyway. And so I was like, I'm going to take the, uh, the stairs one time a day. That's all I have to do. Because believe me, after New Year's Eve driving back, I was like, God, I don't want to take the stairs. I don't want to take the stairs. And I gotten out of that habit. So I take the stairs up all the way, all three flights or three, it's three floors, so really six flights of stairs, uh, at least once a day. That's all I have to do. I usually do it first thing in the morning and then it's out of my way. And I take the stairs down every time. But if I go up those stairs once, I can take the elevator. Have I taken the elevator? Yes. Have I gone up the stairs more than once a day? Yes, I have. But there's been times that I'm like, mm, that's done. I'm taking the elevator the rest of the time. So it is in my head. It's not one of my goals. It's not written down. It's fine. If I don't do it, only I will know. Well, and y'all now, but unless you have like a secret camera outside my office, you're really never going to know. <laughs> but, and if you do, y'all got some stalker issues. Just saying. But it's movement makes your body feel better. And 90% of the time, there are issues out there that movement is very hard. But even then, I would say if you aren't moving, if you have problems with your feet or whatever, move your arms. I do, um, it's called Radio Tazo, R A D I O space T A I S O. And it's a morning routine. It lasts like three minutes and it's moving your arms in, in, op, in directions that you're not used to. And it literally takes three minutes. 
So that's it. My husband is cooking and the smoke alarm is going off. I don't know what that is. I mean, I do know what that is, but I'm going to put this on hold. I'll be right back. Okay. You still might hear the, the alarm. He is searing steaks in a uh, cast iron skillet. <sighs> He's not burning the house down. At least I hope not. Anyway. <laughs> um, but uh, my train of thought. Woo! Inadvertent tangent. There you go. Oh, Radio Tezo. Moving my arms. So just search it on YouTube and there's Radio Tezo 1 and 2. There's some that are in English and some that are in Japanese. This is something that has been broadcast to Japanese uh, citizens every day. They move. They do this. It's a great way to start moving. And they have adapted ones for people who can't stand up. There's, there are uh, folks that do it sitting in a chair. However you want to do it, just search Radio Tezo and you will find uh, a lot of different versions. And I love it. I'm like, sweet. While I'm making my coffee and I've done my squats or whatever, um, I'll do that. And I have an iPad on a stand, much like the one that you're on right now, uh, in my kitchen. And I just search YouTube one there you go in fact I will link my favorite one down below and it's in English so it tells you what to do and it's very simple and there's some times that I can't do all of it like bending over and moving your arms all the way but you get better with practice so just saying I've been doing that every day since the beginning of the year and I done it a long time ago and loved it and I just kind of got out of the habit so I'm trying to keep that habit uh, I've also done uh, Tai Chi and um, uh, a lot of different martial arts, but also uh, uh, there's just various stretches, things like that. So just moving your body is the goal for this week, one time. If you feel like doing it more, great. But one time, push yourself outside your comfort zone to what you have been doing previously. And see how you feel. Don't push yourself to, to a point where you hate life and you never want to try it again because that never really helps anyone. And try not to listen to the voices in your head that will give you every excuse on the planet as to why you should not do it. Because I did that for far too long. And finally, the voice of me wanting to move overrode that other voice. And it is possible, I promise you. And I, up here, I will put a picture, for those of you who don't know, why I feel like I can talk about movement. Because one of those is me at 450 pounds. It, well, probably heavier than 450 pounds. Because there wasn't a scale that I could get on that could weigh me. So, just saying, I kind of feel like I can speak to this pretty well. And movement has literally saved my life. And again, I love to run. I'm a slow runner. I am at best an inconsistent runner. <laughs> given issues with my body and whatnot, but I am a runner and I like being a runner. I'm also a walker. I love to walk. I love to jog. I love to move. And there comes a point when I have to move. Like I just, oh, I get like that. And I'm like, I've got to get out and feel sun on my face and feel the air around me and get out of the building and hear nature. And I used to never be like that. And I am very glad that I am now. But 
you have to find the will, the urge, the desire to do it. It's all on you. My husband does not understand the adrenaline rush that you get from walking or running. He does not get that endorphin thing. And I know that there are people out there that don't understand what that is. The runner's high. I get it. I have it. And if I had a genie, I would wish that I could put the way I feel after that into a bottle so that other people could take even a minute of what it feels like because I think that would change a lot of people's views of everything, of movement, of everything. Um, because trust me, me sitting here and telling you about it, I get it. I was that girl that was like, hmm, I'm 450 pounds. Don't tell me that I need to go out there and run or I need to, to not eat that donut or whatever. I've been there. So all I'm saying is increase your movement a little bit this week. And if you guys want help with anything, I am more than happy to do that for you. I, I, I can help you adapt any exercise out there. I can give you suggestions on what to try to do at the gym. I, I am happy with that. I have trained several people who have gone through gastric bypass and are just starting to learn how to move their bodies. And I did it with what I had. <laughs> and I am more than happy to help. So believe me, I, I, I understand. And I'm also at that point where my body doesn't want to do what I want it to do. My brain wants to run a marathon. My body's like, are you freaking kidding me? No! My body can't fight anymore. But in the style of fighting that I'm used to. But there are other ways that I can fight. And I will do that. There are other ways I can run. There are other ways I can walk. And sometime this month, I will get back in that pool. One way or another, I will get back in that pool. <laughs> because I've, if I don't, I feel like I never will again. And I, there are more triathlons in me. I know that. But I have to get back in that pool. So that's the focus for the month or for the week. But uh, again, if you have any questions, if you need any help, if you want me to help adapt an exercise, or if you want me to get on YouTube in my spandex and show you what the hell I do, I am happy to do that too. I don't care. I will do whatever it takes because I believe in it that much. And I know that moving your body will help you live longer and it will help you with being in your own head because it helped me. And whether that's taking a walk, whether that's running, whether that's, that's jogging, whether that's sitting in the middle of your yard and doing gardening, whether it's going to your mailbox, whether it's parking three parking spots further out than you normally do, try it. See what happens. That's, that's my biggest thing this year is to discover new things. My three points uh, or my three words, I, because I'm extra, is awe and enough and discover. I am in awe of everything. One moment, please. It's ready. Oh, okay. I'll be up there in a minute. Thank you, baby. House is not burned down. And I got dinner. So I'm in awe of everything. Enough, because I am enough. I have enough. And I've had enough. And discover, because I want to discover more. I want to discover more about myself, about my world, about everything. So awe, enough, and discover. Those are my words. So, that is kind of where we're at for week two. Just move. Discover something outside or around your house or around your work, whatever. However you can do it, just try it once. 
this one time. My witch finger. Mm. One time. That's all I ask. Move. And I'm going to go move upstairs and go have my dinner. So thanks you guys for listening to me ramble. And I hope you're enjoying Finding 52 so far. If you post anything about it here, Instagram, Twitter, wherever, hashtag Finding 52. I'll put it right here. And uh, let me know what you're doing. And let me know how you move. I, I would love to hear it. As always, spend the rest of your life celebrating because my, from my lips to the God's ears, it's worth every minute of it. I promise. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.